Death Row, right? How did it come about you being a part of Death Row and you getting the opportunity to do Tupac Machiavelli cover? I mean, I grew up in the same neighborhood with Suge, you know what I mean? So everybody in my neighborhood knew me from the artwork. You know, I grew up on the block, you know, I know everybody over there. It used to be a lot of times, you know, if somebody passed from the neighborhood or whatever, I would go to, you know, to um my people's house, Bert and them, you know what I mean? I would airbrush and everybody knew me through the, through the whole entire neighborhood. So when it came to art, everybody knew me for that. So I used to watch all my, all my, everybody from the neighborhood come through on the low riders, you know, back in the day when Death Row was popping. And then I learned about, you know, I learned that, you know, they was doing the death row thing. And I'm like, man, I got to get down. I got to figure it out. And then that's when I started seeing, like, you know, I seen the doggy style cover. And I was like, man, I got to get on. I I could do art, too. I got to get on. I got to figure it out. So that's how that came about. You know, just the thought of that. When did you first meet Suge? On the day I met Suge Knight, it was at the uh, California Love video shoot at the Compton Swap Meet. You know, um, I had, you know, he had heard about my artwork. You know, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people have been talking about it. My my cousin Gina had took him to see, took some of my artwork for him to see. And he actually wanted me to come to the house that he had grew up in in the neighborhood. But when I went there that day, they was having a meeting. I think Hammer and him was over there at the house or whatever at that time. So when I went there, um, I couldn't see him that day. But when, he, you know, they start shooting a video at the uh, Compton Swap Meet, I was able to, you know, come into contact with him there. You know, when I came into contact, that's when he ended up introducing me to Tupac once he saw my art. And what version of the California Love video was it? This was uh, the California Love video shoot, the edition they did at the Compton Swap Meet. Oh, okay. I see. I see. So it wasn't the Mag Max one. It was the party one. Yeah, this was the party one. Yeah. So take me through that, man. You being on set for California Love and you having to run in with Suge for the second time and showing him your work. I mean, he had already seen my portfolio, so it was funny because the day, the day that they were shooting the video, I was working at the I was working at the at, at the airbrush shop in, in the Compass with well, the Compass Swap. But we had just moved across the street to a two story building, and then you know, um. The owner at that time, Cliff, he wanted me to run an errand for him. So I ended up running the errand in Orange County. And before I left, I seen all these car carriers with all these low riders on them and stuff like that. So I'm thinking like, what, what, what's going on over here? They got all these low riders. And when I ended up running the errand for him and I came back, it was just groves of people out there. So I started seeing a couple of my homies from the neighborhood and I, I started asking them like, what's going on over there? And they was telling me Suge and Tupac and then was over there shooting a the video. Tupac was over there and I'm like, what? So I just went over there. I started went, go, I went over there, you know, to kind of see what was going on. And then that's when I started, like, you know, I'm like, I seen Suge. And I'm like, I wanna, I'm going a, I'm to a holler at him. But I feel like I got to, if I go talk to him, because he had a whole line of people that was waiting to talk to him. So I said, if I feel like if I step up and just talk to him, I ain't going to really be able to talk to him the way that I need to talk to him because he's going to, you know, he's going to be, trying to talk to me as fast as he can to get to the next person. So what I did was I waited to the end of the line. I waited till everybody finished talking to him. And then as soon as I got that space to talk to him, I just walked up to him to start talking to him, you know, about, you know, my artwork and, you know, some, you know, he was, I was supposed to meet with him, but I didn't get the opportunity to do it. And he just asked me, did he, did I have the same book that he saw? And it was actually a, a portfolio book of mine. It was a small, small book. And I was like, no, I, ain't, I don't have it with me, but it's across the street. So he was like, little homie, go get your book and come right back. And I was like, you ain't going to leave, is you? He like, no, nah, I ain't going to leave. Just go get your book and come back. So I took off running across the street, ran, got my book, came back to him, showed him my book. And then once he looked through it for a second, he was like, yeah, come go with me. So we walked up to this white van and he opened up the door and Tupac was inside. So he called Tupac out. And he was like, this is the homie from the neighborhood. This is a little homie. I want you to see some of his artwork. So Tupac started looking through my book. What was Pac's reaction looking at your work? I mean, when 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 Suge was like, yo, check, I want you to check out the little homie from the neighborhood. Look at his work. Pac was like, let me see. So I passed him my I passed him my little booklet. I gave him my portfolio book and he was he was thumbing through the pages. He was looking. He was looking. Cause you know, I, I was already painting him a lot. That was he was a thing. If you was airbrushing t-shirts, you was painting Tupac back in the day from just for me against the world. So I already had pictures of him painting, pictures of everybody, everything I was doing. So when he was flipping through this book, he flipping, he flipping. So now he see this picture of Biggie. So when he see this picture of Biggie, he stopped. Now I don't know about none of this. 
He turned his fixture into it, turned his fingers into a gun. So he boom, boom, boom. Why you draw this? Why you draw this nigga? So I couldn't be like, I like Biggie. You know what I mean? Yeah, after I've seen that type of energy, because I want to get down with him. So I'm just like, oh man, I'm just an artist. I just drew him. Somebody wanted me to draw him. So I just drew him, man. I ain't tripping tripping off of him like that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's kind of what, that kind of was my, that was kind of my energy. Cause it's like, I'm not finna tell you I like Biggie and I see that energy. I'm trying to get on death row. I'm a whatever, you know what I'm saying? So after that, he just looked at me and he just kept on looking at the book. And that's when he was like, yo, we need him to get down on some stuff for um America's Most Wanted. So that's how that went. Yeah, that's wild, man. But was you nervous, though, when you seen how he reacted to the Biggie pictures? Like, damn, I probably missed up my opportunity. No, I didn't feel like that because I felt like I had all of the right answers to keep on going because I wasn't finna show no, I wasn't finna show no love to that right there. Because I, like I said, it was already weeks that was going by that I kept telling myself every day, I'm going to get on death row. I'm going to get on death row. I was really putting that energy in the universe. So when I, like I said, when I got that reaction from him, I just knew how to flip it. Like, man, I ain't tripping off of him. I just drew somebody else wanted me to draw him. I, I put that out there on the table. You <laughs> feel me? I was <laughs> like, I ain't finna, I ain't, nah, it's too, nah. And I was already a big fan of Pox anyway. You know what I mean? Even before I got the opportunity to meet him. So if I'm standing right there face to face with him, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say what counts. Yeah. And that does make sense. Cause I'm thinking about it when, um, Around that time when California Love came out, when they was doing a video and shit, this had to be around October, November-ish of um, 95. So at that time, it wasn't really all the way out there. Like, it was rumblings, but it wasn't really all the way out there that Tupac mm -mm. had beef with Biggie. Mm -mm. No, it wasn't. So that's why I kind of had, it kind of threw me off a little bit to hear that because I never knew that. But I was like, ah, oh, he putting that energy out there. So I got to know how to be receptive of that energy right now and not play myself. Because I know this meant everything in the world right here in front of me. Yeah, that's crazy, man. But speaking of Pocket Biggie, right? When did you first find out that they was really having beef? Like it was official that they was having beef. I mean, I, I knew that the day he said it. But it, it wasn't until I knew it was like really, really super duper official is when I heard hit him up. And when I heard hit him up, I was in the promotions part department at that time and I heard it. And when I heard it, I just thought to myself, I no matter of fact, I went in to B-Man and I said, B-Man, we finna put that out? And B-Man was like, yeah, I, was, I said, oh man, this finna, this finna, this finna, be, the streets finna be hot right now with that out. So that was the first, the first time I heard it before anybody on the streets heard it, I heard it in the office. And I went to him, like I, like I said, I went straight to B-Man, like, B-Man, and we finna put that out? Like, I couldn't, you know, <laughs> it was like, for real. 